Hi, I'm Taylor. Let's talk about key performance indicators for venture funds. So after we forecast all our cash flows, returns, proceeds, all those sort of things, then it comes down to saying, okay, well, how well does this act, did this fund actually perform? So I tend to focus the, the performance indicators on two major kind of components. One is multiples and RRs, right? And the other one is uh, paid in capital, DVPI, TVPI, RVPI. What do those kind of things mean, right? So gross multiple is very simple. Gross multiple is really the performance of your investments. So uh, proceeds divided by investments. Net multiple is gonna reflect the performance of the fund, right? So distributions to the LPs, so net of any fees, carried interest, those sort of things, um, divided by paid in capital, which means inclusive of investments plus fees as well. So that's usually less than gross. Uh, people have benchmarks for what they're looking for in terms of gross uh, and net. Gross IRR and net IRR use the same kind of structures, the same uh, uh, distributions and paid in capital for net and proceeds and and investments for gross, and basically it's a, it's a time-based adjustment to say, okay, what is the actual rate of return over the time periods of, of calling capital and making investments and seeing the actual kind of returns from them. And so typically the way I, I do the model is uh, I'll create an actual kind of forecast of the cash flows and performance of the fund over time, and then I'll create a, an insert. Uh, I'll, I'll do a, a line which basically says, hey, what's my net investments and proceeds per period, and I'll calculate a gross multiple and a gross RR. And I'll actually calculate it at each point in time and basically see how the gross multiple changes over time. And I'll do the same thing for RR to see how the gross IRR changes over time. And I'll do this, it's another line for like net called capital and then distributions, and then do a set the same thing for net multiple and net RR based off of those cash flows. Um, and same, I'll actually, may I you do the formula so I can see how it changes over time, and then usually like in a, in a performance summary metric in the overall, I'll just report like the total like at the end of the fund. But it's still valuable here to see how the multiple changes over time and when I get to like idea of like break even on them. Um, the one addition to that kind of structure is the idea called interim IRRs. Now, gross IRR and net IRR, because of the the uh, the inputs basically in the formula, is really going to affect realized returns. Interim IRRs allows us to capture the performance of the fund, including residual value. Basically, what we're saying is, hey, you know, we're trying to give ourselves credit in our returns for the value that we've created in the fund that hasn't exited yet. So interim IRRs uh, will be higher than net IRRs uh, right up until actually the fund exits, and there should be effectively be the same. Um, so net interim IRRs require a little bit more detail in terms of calculations, and so I usually have to set up those on a cohort basis, you know, over for like each individual period of time, and actually kind of look at the cash flows in each period so I can calculate the IRR. It's more of like a mechanical thing related to like how you normally have to calculate IRRs and spreadsheets. Um, but the goal is basically to make sure that we're always at the end of each period of time um, capture the residual value of the portfolio. And interim IRRs are valuable because it allows us to create, you know, a, a typical chart of like how the IRR changes over time, which is reflective of like a J curve. And a J curve basically is a, is a fairly standard way of like, or expectation of a lot of uh, performance, a lot of funds, which basically is early on you're gonna be underwater. And you're gonna be underwater because you're calling capital and some of it's going towards fees and some of it's going towards investments. Total value of investments is going to be less than what you put in because you know you had fees to cover. But eventually, over time, as you start to have increases in the value of the fund and then perhaps actual kind of proceeds and distributions, then the value is going to come is going to go over that essentially. And so this is a fairly standard look at a, at a J curve up here, which basically you know shows that negative at the front and then, and then cumulative over time. I also usually do like a cumulative cash flows chart. Uh, something like this, which shows uh, paid in capital and distributions to LPs, basically like, getting an understanding of like when the actual the when the proceeds are coming and when does the fund get to like a like a break even for uh, for an LP perspective. So the second component of performance metrics is, as I mentioned, uh, TVPI, DPI, RVPI. Basically, what they try to capture is okay, what are the, what is the multiple of the fund that handles uh, DPI, which is distributions divided by paid in capital, RVPI, which is residual value divided by paid in capital, and then TVPI, which is total value. Now, TVPI is just uh, residual value plus distributions. So mechanically, the way I, I calculate the models is I create a section, uh, usually kind of just like this, 
I do paying capital just so I understand what portion of the fund has been deployed over time, like of the total committed capital. And then residual value, distributed value. Residual value is just the total residual value in the fund at that period of time divided by the total paid in capital at that time. Distributed value the same way. Um, the uh, How much distributions, cumulative distributions to that point in time, divided by paid in capital to that point in time. And then TVPI is basically just the sum of RVPI and TD, uh, DVPI. And similar to the, to the other multiple metrics, I typically calculate them over each period so I can kind of see how they change. Uh, and the key of this is, you know, RVPI will go start going up over time. Um, DV, DVPI will mean zero and two CRC distributions. Residual value will go up and they'll go back down to zero. I, and once you completely exited, there's no residual value left in the fund. So RVPI goes to zero. So like at fund exit, you know, you've you've paid in your total paid in capital is equal to your total paid in capital, the total like uh, committed capital in the fund. And their DVPI is going to be equal to TVPI, and your, residual, your RVPI is going to be equal to zero. But over time, what you generally see is a chart kind of like this, right? this performance ratio chart here, which shows DVPI is zero and then goes up over time. Residual value goes uh, starts, usually goes higher to show some initial returns, and then goes down as you start to have exits. TVPI is the same as RVPI until you start to have exits, and then it starts deviating from that until eventually... Uh, uh, DVPI and TVPI converge at some point in time. And that's a fairly normal expectation for venture funds. If you have suggestions and other metrics to include, always happy for ideas or questions about this, happy to help.